Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video about Aviva Edge. Uh, today we cover a very interesting topic uh, because several people um, ha have questions about how you can link um, Aviva Edge with uh, MySQL Server. And it's, it's a very common question because we don't have a wizard to do the connection. So let me show you what's happening. Let me start Aviva Edge. Let me create a new project, MySQL. No security system for this project. And uh, when you try to configure, let's say the default uh, project uh, database, uh, if you go here to open the list, the list of available uh, providers, you won't have the MySQL, sir, uh, MySQL uh, connector or provider here because this is a list of OLEDB, o -L -E -D -B providers. And the provider that we need for uh, MySQL is uh, a net connector, the net connector, which is uh, not an OLEDB. A provider, if you go, if you open the technical reference manual and you search for MySQL, it will tell you what is required. So it says the provider required for Aviva Edge is MySQL Connector Net. And uh, at the time of this writing, the necessary software can be downloaded the official MySQL site. Okay, so if we click here, this window is open. So we need this uh, software. That's the first first requirement to link a MySQL uh, database. So if we download this, I just want to start my download. It will download the uh, connector net, uh, the MySQL connector net installation package. We need to install this. So it's a typical installation. Install. Okay, let's wait for it. Just in case it will close, every batch. It's not required, but just in case I'm closing it. Okay. So installing and it's installed. If I start. by edge one more time and I go to the same interface options default database the wizard here for the connection string <clears throat> you will see that we don't have the that con the connector net for MySQL available because it's not an OLEDB provider so people ask how oh, we can create the connection string if we don't have the wizard available, we have the wizard uh, for Oracle, we have the wizard for SQL Server, for Access, etc. but we don't have the wizard for MySQL. Well, the answer is simple. You need to write the wizard, you need to write the connection string manually. Uh, before writing the connection string, I always recommend uh, checking that um, you have access to the database server. You have everything, the user, the password, the IP address or host name, um, the database name, etc. cetera. Uh, so what I recommend is uh, going to the uh, web browser and search for MySQL Workbench. So you download the MySQL Workbench. This tool will allow you to connect directly to the uh, MySQL server using MySQL, MySQL tools. And that will guarantee that you have a connection and you have all the parameters to connect with the server. So I will install my uh, MySQL Workbench, complete installation of Workbench. I hope this takes just a couple of minutes, not no more.
Okay, complete. Launch MySQL Workbench now. So here uh, we would like to add the connection. I click it on this plus button, by the way, so I can create a new connection. I will create my my SQL server. Uh, you can put anything here, TCP IP, yes, that's what I need. And the host name, the host name for your MySQL server. In my case, it's running on a virtual machine here at home at 59. It's the IP address, the port, you should use the default. You can change it, but uh, you might want to change it also in that connection string. It's better if you can leave it by default on the server. If you don't have that option, you might want to do to specify the port on the connection string, but but on my case, it's the default port. Username, root, you can change the username by the username that uh, the IT department provided to you or you have configured on your uh, MySQL server. And uh, well, you can click test connection here and it will ask for the password. You can type the password. You can choose to save the password in the vault. I will do it. Click on connect. It says, okay, successfully made the connection. That's fine, great. So let's click on okay. Let's open the connection. And in schemas, you will have the database names here. Uh, this is the one that I have by default. I created this one. This is the default one. I created this DB one. So I have some tables here. I can maybe uh, delete or select, etc. Etc. I don't need that table because I will use it for demonstrate something. Okay, so I have some tables, etc. It doesn't matter. But the important thing is that I have a connection with the MySQL server and because MySQL Workbench is able to connect to it. So that's that tells that I have a connection, a good connection. So I can start working with Indusoft. And this is important because in Indusoft or Avibatch, we don't have a way to test the connection string, a direct way, I mean. So what we need to do is here, write the connection string. So I will start a notepad. And I will go to the technical reference manual because in the technical reference manual, you have an example of the connection string that you need. So I will copy this. You have a description of other uh, parameters here also. If you needed encryption, if you want to use encryption, if you want to use a different port number, uh, etc. You have other parameters here that you might want to use. Uh, but the basic par the basic parameters uh, for the connection string are in this example. So I will put the example in the text no in the notepad, and I will modify it according to my server uh, parameters. So here for server, I will put my server IP address uh, 59. Uh, database, the database name. It, it was DB on my case, because if you check the MySQL workbench, you will see that the database name is DB. Uh, the username on my case, it was root and my password for my testing server. It was a very complex password. It was one, two, three, four, very, very complex. So I, will, I can copy this and put it in the connection string. And that's it. Click OK. Click OK one more time. If you want to test the connection, what you can do is use the trend logger. You can insert the trend logger worksheet. Here in history format, you can select database. If you go to the database configuration, it will use the default uh, project uh, database connection. Okay. And the trend name, it will be the default one, you can leave it like that. So we can test, as you can see in my SQL workbench, we don't have the trend 001 table. So if you accept this and you put any tag here, let's say tag one, and leave everything else like it's already configured and you save the changes and you start the runtime.
if you go to the database tables and refresh and you see trend, trend 001, it means that the connection worked because uh, Aviva Edge uh, was able to create the table. One more time. Configure the history format to database. Put a tag in the body of the trend logger worksheet. Leave everything else by default, including the database configuration, and you will be done. You can even change the default name for the table that it will create. You can call it, uh, let's say, uh, hello, YouTube. And start it again. And it will create a table for you with all the columns and all the columns and data types, etc. So let's refresh the tables. And you have the Hello YouTube table here created. You can select the rows. You can change the value for tab one. Refresh again. You have the value here. So on that way, you can determine if the database connection is working or not. Uh, if it's not working, you might probably want to enable here in the output window with the right click the settings to lock the database messages and the date and time. So let's say that I'm crazy and I would change the parameters for me, my database connection. So my DB server or my database name is no DB, it's DB2, let's say. Um, we start, like it, it says, okay, authentication, user root, using blah, 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 file with on the database. It will tell you what's the problem, what the problem is. The database is unknown. We don't know what you're talking about. So you can take actions to re resolve that problem. That's uh, why it's important having this uh, database messages enabled when you are doing the troubleshooting for the database connection. So if we delete this and change back the configuration to what it should be, DB, DB only, it won't complain anymore. can see it won't complain. We change this. We have the value here. So that's it basically. Um, that's how you can uh, connect with the MySQL database server. Um, the complex thing here is that we don't have the, you know, the we sort to create the connection string. So that's not a problem because you can always write the connection string manually. You have you have a manual, very, very um, useful manual here where you can find all the parameters for the connection string and you only need to put the correct parameters to make it work. So um, I hope this video is useful for you. If you have any questions or any comments, you can leave that look, you can leave those in the uh, comment section below. Thanks for watching.